people who don't understand what science is and how it works, how they then think making the right decisions for themselves when in fact they're not. So I have sympathy for them and the, the film has empathy for them. Hello everyone, this is Talal Azim here from Popcorn and Soda, and I have the privilege to discuss the upcoming film, Shot in the Arm, which tackles questions about vaccinations and medical advancements in connection to human nature with the creatives behind the film. We are joined by one of the top scientists in the world and executive producer, Mr. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Academy Award nominated director, Mr. Scott Hamilton Kennedy. Mr. Tyson and Mr. Kennedy, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you guys today. How are you both doing today? Very well. yeah, I'm, the universe is good, so I'm good. Earth, <laughs> you got, you all got to fix Earth. Let me put it that way. And Scott, and Scott is fine. It's very nice of you. No, no Mr. Kennedy needed. All right, mm -hmm. beautiful. Well, hey, I had the opportunity to watch this film, and uh, it's one that I really enjoyed. And I think more importantly, guys, it's a film that is really relevant today. It makes you think and ask those important questions about what it means to be a human and the impact of science and medical advancements specifically in our lives pre-pandemic and even now. So Neil, I'd like to start off with you, uh, with yourself as an executive producer on the film. For you personally, why this and why now? Yeah, so uh, a big, obviously I'm an astrophysicist, I'm not a medical professional, and but there are plenty of medical professionals interviewed for the film. So my primary insights that I could possibly offer Scott, who is himself an experienced documentarian and storyteller, is to advice and perspectives on communicating science to the public. And the public in this case would be the viewer. And you have a, you have a conflict in this film between people who are anti-science leading them to be anti-vax anti -vax, and then medical professionals who have devoted their lives and their careers thinking about and studying these problems. And so I care about anti-science thinking wherever it is in society. So the anti-vaxxer manifesting much more deeply within society, which is where you get denial of climate change, you get flat earthers, you get, uh, there's, there's an end in the list of things people who don't, don't understand what science is and how it works, how they then think making the right decisions for themselves when in fact they're not. So I have sympathy for them. And the, the film has empathy for them. The uh, the the Many of the anti vaxxers are they're just trying to look for answers. And the question is where you're getting the answers from. And I think the film disentangles that beautifully. I would say that even if I had nothing to do with the film. Well, it's just go off from what you said there, Neil, as documented in the film and as history has shown, there is reluctance to medical advance when it comes to certain types of vaccinations. And you kind of spoke about that just there. Do you think that there is a deeper root to this reluctance when it comes to belief in modern science? Um, deeper. I, I think people don't understand what science is and how it works. And, and I hate to say this, but maybe science needs daily advertising <laughs> if all right what we mean is like here's your world without science without modern medicine oh you probably would have been dead before you turned 30 that we consider that you would have died of smallpox without vaccination you would have died of any number of things and, and scott i should have him tell where you know the people who are anti-pharma yet their medicines in their own cabinet that they're taking produced by pharma that apparently they're okay with that, but they're going to cherry pick something else. Why? Well, there's a charismatic leader that's saying, I'm in, I'm helping you fight these big faceless corporations. And I have a face and it's charismatic. So you're going to listen to me. And, and so there's a mismatch in the marketing forces that go to the anti-vaxxers, anti-science folks relative to the rest of the world the rest of what is keeping us alive and building on whose backs the civilization has been built the science technology engineering and math so yeah uh I, we need better marketing maybe and and decency neil right we talked yeah you know, so much about how much the how much the how important the 
teaching and reteaching of the scientific method is education. 100% so important. It needs, it needs to be taught every day across all disciplines. At the same time, we're not teaching decency in schools in the same way we used to either, right? We're not ethics classes. And we need to remind ourselves that that needs to be part of this. And decency includes humility. Decency. Ethics and civics classes, by the way. Yes. You know, what, what? You're storming the Capitol because you think what? Right? Really? Is that how you think this is going to solve it? Really? You know, yeah. that, that's a civics thing and and the the social contract i say call that a civics thing scott absolutely yeah we didn't know we were making a film about the social contract until we until we're getting the editing room. but it's a, such an important part of of the film both as a warning of the dangers of how fragile it is and incredibly inspiring to see the people again by a much larger percentage is the people that are following the social contract God, I, I love the work that you did as a filmmaker on this project because so much of the story is told from your perspective and through your lens. And uh, in, in the movie, you speak about the measles outbreak and how that was something that you were in documenting as well. And now when the COVID-19 pandemic happened, in your opinion, what changed the most in your experience as how the world reacted to that versus some of the other outbreaks that we've had? To COVID or to measles? Uh, into COVID. To COVID. Yes, I think um, I think we safely say that it was the most politicized response to uh, to to an outbreak that 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 I, I I can remember. Neil, you can probably help me out with that. Not that we haven't had look at the first images of the film or from 1918 when we had uh, when we were seeing people having the same issues with wearing masks or not trusting them. But it is the most politicized that I've seen a response to public health, maybe outside of AIDS. I guess would be the next most politicized uh, conversation. And it's just a shame because science isn't political, as Paul Offit says in the film, or at least it shouldn't be, right? That the scientific method doesn't care about your race, class, creed, who you sleep with, what country you're from, any of that. It is a method to try and find out if you are making, you are discovering what is true versus what isn't true, what is safe versus, versus what isn't safe, and using that to make the world a better place, not just for an individual, but for all of us. Now, I would love to get your thoughts on this as someone who is in love with filmmaking and movies. So as the pandemic began, the way productions and films are shot, they changed completely. So for someone like yourself, what was the biggest hurdle that you faced as a creative during the production of this film? He's uh, asking if you filmed any of this on an iPhone. That's, a, <laughs> probably, that's not why he's asking. That. Definitely some of it filmed on smartphones. Um, uh, but yeah, the pivot would be obviously fil filming remotely and um, and putting myself and my family in the film because I had no interest in, 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 in doing that. I love my family. I'm grateful that they're honest and charismatic, um, bo both honest um, in terms of the truth and honest in terms of their frustration with uh, us as a family that you see with, you see in the film. I wanted to make sure that that was in there so that my, I'm jumping, that was the biggest uh, change was deciding if my family should be in it. Because I had no interest in doing that. Well, and, plus, I, that was made for you because of lockdown, right? That's I mean, right. I had yeah. to try and make the best lemonade that I could with that. And we, I just begged my collaborators, including Neil, to, to not let us be precious with my family. Do not make it look like a humble brag. Do not make it look like, oh, gee, there's we're the nice, good documentary filmmaking. We're, we're just representative of the all of us, thankfully. My wife is a as a teacher. Yeah, that helped. If she wasn't a teacher, it would have yeah. said, "Scott, what are you doing? Get the get the <laughs> yeah. camera the hell out of your house." Maybe right. not. Yeah, maybe, maybe she was a big she was a big part of that. So yeah, that making that turn was and a was teacher cool. of diverse students. I mean that right. too, right? If this was some if this was some the prep school that 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 would have been a different thing, right? We, right. It was like you yeah. look at my poor kids in this prep school. Look what they have to go through. Yeah, that 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 wouldn't work. Neil, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. With the creation of the COVID-19 vaccination in such a short amount of time, where do you personally think that ranks in terms of scientific advancements historically? Well, I, when I think of advances, I don't think of time so much as what the advance is. And the uh, mRNA is, is it, as, a, as a tool, a new tool to gain access to the vaccine, what it can do once you're given the genome of the pathogen, uh, that itself is is remarkable. 
that that's an advance. That's that is an advance. The fact that it was in six months or three months or a year uh, that mattered to the spread of the disease. But for me, it's this new way that you can now make a vaccine that um, uh, that opens up whole new uh, avenues, boulevards for the for vaccines in our future. And I foresee a day when uh, we have some perfect, I, mean, I, don't, I have no medical expertise to make this claim, but it'd be interesting to, to think that the day will come where we have a perfect antiviral vaccine, where any virus that comes to you, it's going to attack it. And the notion that we have any kind of viral illnesses going forward becomes a thing of the past. I, I look forward to something like that. If our progress in vaccines is as it, as it has. Well, this is my last final quick question to both of you is I always like to take away one positive out of every situation. And for your guys Good. personally, Good thing to do. absolutely. For yourself personally, uh, throughout the pandemic, was there something, uh, an activity, a TV show, something that you guys rediscovered a passion for that it made a positive impact in your life? Well, my, for my family, it was, it was actually uh, Stephen Colbert's opening monologue. We showed up and watched that together on, on YouTube, actually, because uh, it was on later than you, we know it would be awake. And it was just a beautiful way to end the day with a little bit of news, a little bit of perspective, and his spectacular combination of humor and humanity, um, love of this country, uh, but not discounting uh, that disinformation is dangerous. Uh, we found him just incredibly uh, entertain, entertaining and, and, a, and a nice way to end the day. Neil, for yourself? Yeah. Sure. I'm not, I don't typically have the time to watch an entire series rather than just a movie on, on television or on any streaming service. But what the lockdown, there it is. So... <laughs> For me, the highlights of the knock of the lockdown were the Queen's Gambit on Netflix, yeah. which rejuvenated chess in the in the world, uh, and the film Don't Look Up, also from Netflix. That that film, uh, you know, about an asteroid that is at risk and people are in denial of it. Uh, I I tweeted. I said. This is a, a fictional tale of an asteroid. Um, that, but the more I know and think about my experience with the press, with social media, with the public, and their intersection with science, I have to conclude that it was instead a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> so those two were, for me, highlights of... of oh, I also wrote a book that? Over, over that time, <laughs> Cosmic Perspectives on Civilization. So sorry, I, I, I forgot to mention that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. And uh, I, I want to thank both of you for taking the time out of your day to discuss this film. I, I think it's a great thought provoking film and it speaks a lot about our placement within the universe and science in it. And I wish you both all the best at the release of the film. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you today. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for your interest. Thank you.